In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a Raspberry Pi RGB matrix that displays whatever you're listening to on Spotify. So let's get started by showing you what you're going to need for this build. So we have a Raspberry Pi Zero, a micro SD card, a 5 volt 4 amp power adapter, a 64 by 64 RGB matrix, the cables that come along with the matrix, and finally the RGB matrix bonnet. So on this matrix bonnets, I have soldered GPIO pin 4 and 18 together, as well as the bottom there, where it says E, I put a little bit of solder on the bottom connector. Now for assembly, it's pretty simple. So first we're going to take the Raspberry Pi and the matrix bonnet, and we're just going to seat them onto the GPIO pins. Make sure it snaps all the way into place. Next, we are going to attach our power cables to the matrix itself. So make sure that the red goes to the positive, and then just take your screwdriver and tighten it down. And then do the same for the black and make sure that it goes to the negative. Now that we've got that, we are going to attach the ribbon cable. So we're going to attach the first end to the matrix bonnet itself. So make sure that it clicks all the way down into place. Now we are going to attach the power source to the matrix itself. So again, make sure that the red goes to power and that the black goes to ground. Next, we are going to attach the ribbon cable. So again, make sure that it clicks all the way into place. And lastly, we are just going to connect our power. So make sure you plug in one end to the wall and the other end into the RGB bonnet itself. So the first thing we're going to do in setting up the software is we are going to go ahead and navigate to developer.spotify.com. And from here, we are going to go ahead and log in and click on dashboard. So this dashboard is where we are going to basically create an application that's going to allow us to authenticate with the Spotify web API. So we're going to go ahead and click create an app and we're going to give it a name and I'm just going to name mine Spotify dash test and we're going to go ahead and give it a description. So I'm going to say 64 by 64 matrix matrix and I'm going to go ahead and accept the terms and go ahead and click create. So now it's going to show us our application here, which is Spotify dash test. And it's going to show us a client ID. So we're going to use this client ID when we actually go ahead and generate our token. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to click edit settings. And we're going to add a redirect URI. So I am going to go ahead and just say HTTP localhost slash redirect. And we're going to go ahead and click add. And then we're going to click save. So now we are going to go ahead and clone my repository. So we're going to go to my GitHub which is github.com slash ryanwa18 slash spotify. And we're going to go ahead and just clone the repo. So if you navigate down to the readme, you will see this command, git clone, and then the URL. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. And we're going to go ahead and paste that into our terminal. And so now we have a directory called spotify that we can now change into. So we got a CD. Spotify, and there we go. And this has all of our code. So what we're going to use is this generate generate token sh. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And in order to do that, we can do bash uh, generate dash token sh. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, and we're going to go ahead and just paste it in here. And it's going to try to install the Spotify library. And if you don't have that already, it will install it automatically. And if you do, it will say that you've already installed it. 
So we're going to go ahead and enter the Spotify client ID. So we're going to go back to our dashboard and we're going to go ahead and copy, copy this entire thing, copy, and then we're going to paste it right here. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Now we're going to enter our Spotify client secret. So we're going to go ahead and click show client secret. We're going to copy that and we're going to paste it. Now we're going to enter our Spotify redirect URI. So if we go to edit settings and we're going to go ahead and copy this, copy and paste and then hit enter. And lastly, we're going to enter our Spotify username. So mine is Ryan WA 18 and then I'm going to hit enter. Now it's going to show you, it's going to ask you to basically uh, authenticate. So you're going to log in and you're going to click agree. And it's going to say that this site can't be reached, but really it's giving you this URI to copy and paste into the terminal. So we're going to go ahead and take this entire thing. We're going to copy it and we're going to paste it into my shell script. And there we go. So it said that the Spotify token was created and it tells you the file name. So if we do ls-la, we can now see that we have this .cache-ryanwa18. And that's because my username is ryanwa18. And so that's it for generating the token. And now we're going to move on to installing the software on the Raspberry Pi itself. So we're going to go ahead and move on to now installing the software onto the Raspberry Pi. So make sure that your your so make sure that your Raspberry Pi is plugged in and that we can SSH to it. However, before we SSH into it, we are going to go ahead and copy that file that we created, the .cache file, and we're going to go ahead and copy it over to our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to go ahead and do scp and then the name of the file which is .cache dash Ryan wa18 and we're going to go ahead and use the default username at raspberry raspberry pi dot local and we're just going to go ahead and copy it to the home directory so if we just add a colon now it's going to ask you to uh, basically authentic or er, make sure that you want to reach the raspberry pi dot local and we're going to go ahead and confirm and we're going to go ahead and type in the password and the default password for a Raspberry Pi is just Raspberry. And you can see once it says 100%, that means that it copied over successfully. So now that we've copied the file, we're going to go ahead and actually SSH to our Raspberry Pi. So if we go ahead and do SSH Raspberry Pi dot local and then we're going to give it the username pi and our password is going to just be raspberry and we are now logged in to our raspberry pi so again we're going to go ahead and clone the repository so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this command and i'm going to go ahead and paste it And now we have a directory called Spotify, just like we did on our local machine. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move that file that we copied over into our Raspberry Pi to the repository directory. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a move dot cache dash Ryan WA 18. And I'm going to move it to Spotify. So next, we're going to go ahead and change into the Spotify directory. So CD Spotify. And we're going to run the setup script. And we need to run this as a root. So we're going to paste that. And now it's going to do a bunch of stuff and it's going to ask for a few prompts. First and foremost, it's going to install the Spotify library. So I'm going to speed through a lot of this because it does take quite a bit of time for all of this to install. 
So it's first going to ask for our Spotify client ID. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my dashboard and we're gonna go ahead and copy our client ID. So copy and paste. Next is going to ask for our Spotify client secret again. So we're gonna go ahead and copy, copy and paste. And it's going to ask for the redirect URI. So again, edit settings, and then copy and paste our Spotify username. And then it's going to ask for the full path to the Spotify token. So in our case, it's going to be home slash pi slash Spotify slash dot cash dash Ryan WA 18. And now it's going to run a bash script that is going to install all of the drivers for the RGB matrix. So we're going to go ahead and continue with along with the prompts. We're going to continue with typing yes. And it's going to ask you for the interface board type. And in our case, it's going to be the RGB matrix bonnet. So select one. And for the next option, we are going to go ahead and choose quality because we soldered GPIO pin four and 18. Go ahead and continue. And again, this is going to take quite a bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. All right, so once the installation is complete, it's going to ask us if we want to finish. In order to finish, we need to go ahead and reboot the Raspberry Pi. So just go ahead and type yes. And it's going to reboot. And then the services should now be started. So just go ahead and test to see, to make sure that your Raspberry Pi is still on. So we can go ahead and ping it. So ping raspberry pi dot local. And you can see we're getting a response. Let's go ahead and now navigate to our web browser and we can type in HTTP and we can give it the name of our, our the host name of our Raspberry Pi, which in my case is just Raspberry Pi, raspberrypi.local and hit enter. And now you can see this is the configuration page that I created in order to easily adjust some settings. So we have uh, brightness, so we can scale this up and down and we can click update and it'll actually change the brightness of the screen. And we can also change the height and width of the screen. So say you're using a 32 by 32, you can go ahead and change that here and click update and that will fix any issues you have with the screen. Um, but we're gonna leave this as 64 by 64 and you can also turn on and off the display. So if it's already on, it won't let you click this button, but if you, if you wanna turn it off, you just click off. And now you can turn it back on. Also, there are some, there's some documentation. So this just links you to my GitHub page with any information that you might need. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and see the final product as it's actually turned on and able to display whatever song I'm listening to on Spotify. So that's the default logo for whenever a song is not playing. And then as soon as you start playing a song, it will actually display the cover art. And that's it. Thanks for watching.